Okay. Um, I think I think we're live, right? Can you hear me? <laughs> Yikes! I'm not sure. I'm li looking over the comments right now, and they're so cute. You guys are talking to each other, which I love. So, hello, welcome to my first live show <laughs> ever. I don't know what to talk about today, but mostly I really wanted to make this just because I hit 50k, which is absolute insanity so thanks guys for supporting me and you know being here and hanging out for my live show i know it was supposed to go up at three i ran into some issues <laughs> but thanks for being here now at four well my time i see that a few of you guys are coming from all around the world and it's pretty late where you're at so thank you and yeah i mean mostly i just want to answer some questions today with you guys if you had any burning questions uh just kind of chit chat with you i figured we can do some reading maybe because it is the last days of the magical readathon that's be being hosted by g over at book roast and i have a lot of reading to do so we can definitely have a couple of reading breaks maybe like 15 minutes at a time and yeah just hopefully have a good time so Oh, perfect. Oh my gosh. Aww. So you're from Argentina. Love that. Gotta represent. Perfect. And then, perfect. Yeah, so as far as what I'm currently reading, guys, um, I'm kind of in the middle of a few just because as far as like audio, I am still listening to The Merciful Crow. If you guys caught my reading vlog from not this last week, but the week before. I'm listening to that and I'm almost done. And I actually started a reread of A Court of Mist and Fury. I don't want to be blamed for this. Um, Crescent City got to me. I finished it the other day. And after that, I just felt like in a very Sarah J Mass mood. So I started rereading A Court of Mist and Fury. So I am kind of like eh, over halfway, I guess at this point. But I also have Aquaroon Cove. I really want to finish this with you guys today because this is for my, which challenge is it? Let me check. Um, it is for something, definitely something. Oh, it's for my potions. Yeah, Shrinking Solution, book under 150 pages. So. Uh, we'll hopefully finish that one together today because I think it would be fun and just like a good feel good time. But I, don't worry, I won't spoil you or anything like that. I just mean I'm going to finish it with you guys. <laughs> and then let's see. Perfect. Oh, nice. So Nadia asked, how do you find motivation during quarantine? And oh, I can actually show it, I'm pretty sure. Perfect. So yeah, for me, it's been kind of a wild ride because I feel like maybe quarantine hasn't hit me as hard as some people have just because I tend to be really good at home. I'm kind of a homebody in general. There's a lot to get done when I'm home and I just haven't felt as affected by not being able to go outside or hang out with people or hang out with friends, especially because I do live with a few of my friends. I live with my boyfriend and then Two of our friends so it's been kind of easier for me i think to transition but as far as motivation goes that's been kind of a tricky one just because i obviously feel like i should be getting so much more done i feel like a lot of us feel that way that we have all this extra free time that we should be getting all this extra stuff done that we hadn't been able to do before because of like work or school or whatnot but having all that extra added pressure doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to become motivated so I think I'm finally, oh, hey, Chala, you wanted to say hi? Stop being a statue. <laughs> but I, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, I feel like I finally got into the rhythm of things with this kind of quarantine layout. And it's been more about just finding a balance because there were definitely days where I was extremely motivated and all I wanted to do was work on like YouTube things and read but then the next day i would feel very unmotivated because the previous day had like sucked all my energy out so this last week i actually kind of chilled out i didn't worry as much about videos or 
reading and it actually motivated me to read because I mean, I finished Crescent City, I had a great time, I read an entire day. And I also actually started working out again, which is really, really nice. Just like doing some casual yoga every single day, just from like YouTube videos. And I think having those like different balances in my life has made it a lot easier to want to be motivated during quarantine. So I guess that's my roundabout way of saying you just need some balance and like a little bit of a routine. I'm not saying that I wake up at the same time every day or exercise at the same time every day, but having like the set things that I know I want to do helps a lot. And ooh, one sec. <laughs> I wanted to close the door because <laughs> it still makes me anxious whenever I know that my roommates can hear me. <laughs> but here, let's read through this. Um, for reading vlog, as far as Crescent City goes, this is kind of a strange one because I didn't really plan on vlogging. I wanted to vlog in the very, very beginning because there's a certain scene that happens that's sort of talked about in the summary that I just wanted to get my thoughts out before it happened. And so I vlogged during that, but then the entire middle of the book, I didn't vlog at all. And then the other day when I was finishing the last like 300 or so pages, I decided to vlog. <laughs> so we'll see how I do it. I think it'll be kind of fun because I was texting Mika. So Mika's actually a booktuber as well. She's Mika August here and she and I were talking about Crescent City because we absolutely adore Sarah J Mass. So I have a lot of texts to her saying my theories and I think it'll be kind of fun to sprinkle them in the middle of those two vlog clips. So that'll be kind of what it's more about, but I really wanted to keep my dedicated video for Crescent City a little bit more spoiler free because I wanted everyone to be able to watch it. As much as I loved Crescent City, I wasn't able to watch anyone's uh, dedicated reading vlogs for it because I didn't want to get spoiled. So it's more like gonna be, it's more gonna be like a spoiler free beginning section letting you know like all my thoughts and feelings without giving anything away and then I will probably add those like clips at the end and maybe have a little bit of a spoiler discussion at the end I'm not sure exactly yet but I think it'll be pretty fun to do and then someone asked Katie asked if Crescent City ends on a cliffhanger and I don't think it's a spoiler to say that it doesn't really uh it's actually like a very clean ending in a way like it definitely leads you to believe that there's still a lot unresolved but there the, the thing for that book felt resolved so if that helps you out I mean I know that I'm gonna suffer waiting for the next book to come out but that's only because of other aspects which I won't get into in this live show <laughs> oh gosh I missed everything uh so Miriam asks if I still do physical reading or just do audiobooks. In the beginning of this year, I've I only did audiobooks. I was in a very strange reading mood. I feel like when you feel like you have to read, it takes all the fun out of it and then you just kind of keep forcing yourself to. And audiobooks are an easy way for me to force myself to because I like to like listen to them just while I get ready or drive or anything like that. So it was an easy way to kind of like cop out of not reading but I'm back in a physical reading mood so thank goodness for that thank goodness for Crescent City <laughs> but yeah I mostly I love to physical physically read and I was just waiting for my like motivation to physically read come to come back so I'm just glad it's there because I was getting a little bummed <laughs> Kevin said he also texted Mika while reading Crescent City. Oh my gosh, I should have texted you. I totally blanked. I can't believe that I forgot that you're another Sarah J. Mass Dan. My bad. And Kevin, if you didn't know, is an Irish reader. So yeah. <laughs> and then my favorite book that I've read this month and asked, I mean, it has to be Crescent City. I'm sorry. I'm going to try and stop talking about Crescent City because I feel like I'm going to get really annoying about it really quick, but it definitely has been my favorite so far in general in life. <laughs> so Milagros asked if I've ever thought about doing a video in only Spanish and she asked in Spanish, but I have not. The reason for that being is as much as I am fluent in Spanish, I feel like there's a lot of vocabulary that goes into just making a, a YouTube video 
that I don't have in Spanish. Like, I mean, I, I'm sure I could work on it. I'm sure it would still make sense, but I would feel very stuck the whole time and it just wouldn't flow as naturally. So right at this moment, I'm still not planning on doing any kind of videos in Spanish. Maybe in the future, I'm not gonna say never, but it's just definitely one of those things that I would also want to make subtitles for just in case anyone did wanna watch that didn't speak Spanish and it's just gonna, it'll be kind of a, a time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Angela asked about Bryce and Hunt, but again, I really don't want to talk about Crescent City as much in the slideshow. I'll just let you know that in my opinion, not really. Like I can definitely see the similarities between them and the other characters, but in my opinion they're they're definitely set apart like they have different mindsets i just i mean i can see the similarities 100 percent, but they're different but i don't know <laughs> oh my cats are doing great i mean chala's right here let's see i actually did this on my laptop so we can move you around just in case so he's hanging out right now he's having a good time he actually loves my roommates which is great but it kind of makes Luna feel left out. So she's been a little lonely-ish, but she just hangs out with me in the book room. She's super sweet. And yeah, I mean, I feel like they're finally getting used to their new home and getting more like out of their shell, which is awesome. <laughs> Oof, I'm sorry, I keep missing like all of these questions in the middle because it like stalls and then a bunch load at the same time. So, ooh, 24 hour readathons. Okay, so Sunder asked if I, or suggested that I should film more of them. And I'm actually low key, I was thinking about planning one either for today or tomorrow, depending on how much I finish reading today, because I, I know that there's like certain books on my TBR for the magical readathon that I just have not gotten to yet, but we'll see if that ends up happening. It just depends on how much I'm able to get finished today. But I do love filming 24 hour readathon, so don't worry, those are gonna keep happening on my channel. Um, Emma asked if T'Challa is named after something or someone, and yes, he is. T'Challa is actually, if you are a Marvel fan, then the Black Panther, his real name is T'Challa. So when I think the movie was coming out in like a year or so, like we had bought. We hadn't bought T'Challa, we, we got him because he was free. But we got T'Challa as a kitten and I am I thought I was a huge Marvel fan and my boyfriend is supposed to be this DC Comics fan, but we're sitting there and I wanted to name him Toothless, but he didn't have green eyes. Toothless from the movie How to Train Your Dragons. So I was stuck because I was like, I'm not gonna name him Toothless if he doesn't have green eyes. It's just, that's just not gonna happen. And my boyfriend suggested T'Challa and I was pretty confused. I'm like, who, who, who's T'Challa? And he goes, it's the Black Panther. And I felt pretty dumb after that. But to be fair, no one knew that until the movies came out. So, and now there's a ton of T'Challas roaming about, little black cats that are named him, but it's okay. In my, in my heart, he's the only T'Challa. I mean, besides like the superhero T'Challa, you know? <laughs> Uh, let's talk about Twilight. This is kind of funny to me, just because I feel like I've been seeing so many new videos about Twilight. I mean, besides uh, Kevin from The Irish Shooter, he's been doing an amazing series of him reading the series for the first time, and I adored it. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I actually prefer, though, his, like, reading The Host for the first time, because that is one of my all-time favorite books. So I'm, no spoilers, but check it out, because I think yeah, if you like The Host, you'll like the blog. But I like Twilight. I have nothing bad to say about Twilight. I mean, do I think it's quality? No. <laughs> um, but I, it's nostalgic. That's one of the series that got me back into reading when I was really young. So it's just always going to have a special place in my heart. Like I grew up waiting for the movies. It was such a shock watching part two of Breaking Dawn on premiere night and being like, this was not in the books and then having it be, hello, you want to hang out? 
Okay. Uh, have it be rectified. So I, I have nothing bad to say about it. Do I think it's amazing or that anyone has to read it? No, absolutely not. But I mean, I'm never going to bag on it. It was definitely, <laughs> it was just a good time, you know? Ooh, I feel like this will be a good question. So the Gone series is one that I get asked about all the time because it has a very, very obvious like spine. The whole series is just a big old block letter, white lettering word. And I get questions constantly asking me what the series is. So it is the Gone series by Michael Grant. And I read it quite a while ago, but I loved it. It was, I mean, it's dark. It's pretty dark, not gonna lie. So it has a lot of darker topics. Basically, it's a, we're in California and there's these kids just in school when out of nowhere, their teacher disappears and they're all left pretty confused. And then they start to realize that everyone that was 16 and over disappeared and they don't understand what happened, but they're all kind of just excited about it. Like they don't know why, but their parents are gone. All the like people that are in charge are gone. So they do what young kids will do and they kind of go wild. They party and they like break things and they, I mean, it starts to really build on itself because it starts as kind of like careless fun. Like it's like an endless party for a few days. And then you start realizing that there's no food and you start realizing like your parents still aren't back. And when are they gonna come back? And you realize that there's this dome that's locking you into your city. And it was just, really crazy because it does kind of talk about that whole like human nature kind of thing so when no one is watching when there's no one to punish you like what would you really do and there are the people that step up and are good and trying to like keep order but there are definitely the people that go the opposite direction that realize that they're able to do whatever they want and they're going to get away with it and it's also pretty just sad because uh after those like first few days i remember that this isn't really a spoiler at all, but I clearly remember this scene because it was just so startling. It wasn't something that I ever thought about, but it was very obvious. They're checking through the houses to make sure that all the kids are okay because it's been a few days and obviously kids can't take care of themselves. And they walk into one of the houses and there was a dead baby. So it was pretty sad because obviously no one would have gone looking for this child if like they weren't related to them or didn't know about them. So in those days where all these kids were partying and everything and the parents disappeared, there was an infant that was left alone. So if that's like the start of the darkness in the series, it gets darker and darker and darker. So just warning for that, but it is really, really good. And if you're like interested in that kind of like human nature talk, I would highly recommend it. Someone asked if I would ever do a TBR video with my boyfriend and I would like to, I just don't think I want to like, he's just not much of a reader. He doesn't have like an interest in it. It's not necessarily that, it's more like he doesn't have like the time for it. So I would never want to like force him to read, but I, I don't know. I would definitely want to talk to him about it first and see if like that would ever be something he'd want to do with me, but we'll see. All right. Oh, well, someone asked, uh, so I've actually seen this question a few times, but this is the last time that I saw it. And just asking how me and my boyfriend met. Uh, it's not like anything crazy. When I was in college, I was in a sorority and he was in a fraternity. So it was kind of, at least at uh, the college that I went to, UNLV, it's like a pretty small Greek life. So basically everyone ends up knowing everyone. But it, we met <laughs> because of my big sister in the sorority. So not like my actual big sister, I'm an only child, but like she's my big in the sorority. She, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but she was interested in him before I ever knew who he was. And I remember she showed me like a picture of him on Instagram and I was just sitting there kind of like, okay. <laughs> but don't worry, I didn't do anything like creepy or snarky and like snatch him away but she ended up dating a guy and like she was with a boyfriend and then later on I met him again and 
we kind of hit it off and don't worry she's never been mad about it or anything like that she only had like a very small crush on him so it's been four years now so i mean we're good <laughs> but yeah it, it was just kind of like a fraternity sorority thing which i feel very goofy saying <laughs> Someone asked if I was going to be reading the Hunger Games prequel and, oh, here I found it. So Sunday. And I, oh my gosh, your little icon, it's a dog. Is that your dog? I love it. Okay, okay. Anyways, but I don't think I will be reading the Hunger Games prequel just because I kind of like where it left off and I'm not very interested in seeing President Snow's journey because I'm pretty sure that's what it has to do with. So I, I just don't really want to ruin it. I'm going to wait to see if people are giving it great reviews, then I definitely will consider trying it out. But at this time, I just don't really have any plans for it. Uh, and then someone asked me who is living in my house, which I feel like this is a good question to answer because here, Momo, I'll put your, there you go. But just because I keep getting a lot of questions on these in my vlogs because people are very confused overall. So my boyfriend and I, when we left our old house, we had to move into our parents' house for a little just because the place that we were going to be moving into fell through. So we had to wait it out. And then while we were waiting, his best friend, one of my really good friends as well, their family house, like his mom and his dad were actually going to be moving to California for work and they were originally I think planning to rent out the house and then it kind of worked out in our favor that she like they wanted to rent it out to us so we moved into their family house if that makes any sense so it's my boyfriend's best friend another one of his friends which is the younger brother of the best friend I feel like that was very confusingly said but it's two brothers my boyfriend and me so it's just the four of us and yeah I mean, that's kind of it. We're, we're all really good friends, though, so it's, it's a fun time. Hmm. <laughs> Serena asked, is that how you say it, Serena? Uh, what is the first thing you would like to do after the quarantine ends? I feel honestly guilty saying this just because I I have no I have no need for this to end. I love being at home. I want it to end only for everyone else because I know that a lot of other people are like struggling just being cooped up all day. I know my boyfriend is struggling being cooped up all day. He really likes like having his like routines and being able to leave the house and hang out with his friends and going to the gym and things like that. He has his like set things that he likes to do outside of the house. Well, for me, I I love being home. I love staying home. I just have so many things to do at home. I think that in general, doing YouTube, it takes so much time and effort that you forget that you've been sitting at home all day while you do it. And then you still have all these other things to do, like read or watch TV or work out now that I started doing yoga and Pilates. So I guess the first thing I'll do when quarantine ends is uh, probably hang out with my best friend. I guess that's a good answer because I do want to see her. She actually, it's very exciting. She just announced that she is going to be having a baby and that's my first friend ever that got pregnant and stuff like that. So it's, I mean, nerve wracking for me because I don't know how I would ever be around babies, but I'm excited for her and I definitely want to see her because her birthday was during quarantine. So I miss her. But that's that's the first thing I guess I'd do. After that, I'd come back home. <laughs> Perfect. Someone asked what I use to edit thumbnails. This is a, oh, where'd you go? I was about to put your comment up, but it, it disappeared. So uh, I actually use Adobe Spark to do my thumbnails. I do basically everything on there. If I want to get really fancy with it, then I'll kind of switch all of my photos in through face, no, not Facetune, through Visco, the app, and like I'll do the editing, like color-wise, in there, and then I'll switch it over to Adobe Spark for putting in the 
thumbnail part, like the actual title and the blocks, if I have to do blogs or anything like that. So yeah, it's just Adobe Spark. It's been the same for uh, like almost two years now. I think, it, no, 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 definitely a year though. <laughs> Um, I feel like I've seen this a couple times. Ashley asked long series recommendations. I'm bored, lol. I get it. Uh, I is it too too annoying to say like just start with Throne of Glass and then if you like it, just keep going. <laughs> but that would be like a good one just because there's so many books that Sarah J. Mass has written at this point and they all just kind of like feel like each other. So if you liked one of them, you'll likely like the rest. So I would probably start there. Really long series. If you still haven't started the Shadowhunter books, this is like the ideal time to start if you, if you felt like it, just because I know that it's pretty frustrating that you have to read the entire series before you can read the new book that everyone's excited about. But right now would be a good time if you want something long. Uh, now for some more like, what's the word I'm looking for? Low key, that's not the word I'm looking for. Just underrated, more underrated series. Uh, I talked about it at the start, but Gone series, that's, it's a six book series and they're both, they're all pretty chunky. So I would start with that as well if you're not too worried about the uh, darkness of it, the grim dark. Uh, I'm checking out my, bookshelves right now. I never can think of series off the top of my head. Is anyone else like that? I know like my absolute favorites and then they're all gone. That's why I never have made an underrated books video because I don't think I read underrated books and that's really sad. I'm sorry. Um, let's start with those two recommendations. But if you've read those, then We'll think about it a little bit more and I'll, I'll come back to this. <laughs> so, Mallory asked, what's it like living with roommates? This is actually a great question for me because I, I love being alone. You guys know this. So for me, I thought that this was gonna be a way harder transition than it actually was. It's more, I think, about finding the right roommates because I've had roommates in the past. I mean, I've been with my big in the past, which she was fun, but like we, we just have like, it just depends on the roommate, honestly, because it doesn't matter how much you like love the person. It's more about how you're living together. Like if you all have similar living habits, which luckily we do in this house, I mean, me and the two brothers do. We have a lot more similar habits as far as like sleep and wake patterns. And uh, like, I guess uh, we have similar productivity habits. That doesn't make sense. But basically we all stay in our rooms all day and it works out really well for us. <laughs> uh, so it's really just about that, I think, because any roommate experience, no matter how much you love a person can be ruined if you just don't mesh well in that way. So if you're like a night person like me and then you're rooming with a morning person that wants to wake up at 5 a.m. sharp and make coffee and talk to you and obviously you can't do that as a night owl, like you're just not gonna feel good about it, that would mess up the roommate part of it. Not as much like the friend part, obviously, but. And then. So, someone said, LOL, living with three boys. I know, right? When I first was about to move back in, all I could think was, oh my God, I'm going to be living with boys. <laughs> Just because, you know, there's like a whole stigma against boys being dirty. And to be fair, I feel like I do the most cleaning in this house, but they're not filthy either. So that's good. But yeah. Oh, this is fun. Ella asked who my favorite Marvel character is. Okay, this one's kind of difficult just because I, growing up, was such a fan of X-Men and I watched like the old cartoon of it. I watched some of the newer cartoons of it. I got like a big old book of like the cartoons and I absolutely adored Rogue and Gambit. Like they were my babies. So when the movies started coming out for the Avengers, it was kind of like a whole new area of Marvel for me. And 
as far as like the Avengers go, like the main, the top ones, Iron Man is, I love him, you know? He just, his snarkiness really sings out to my soul. Uh, I just wish I had the kind of like spine necessary to just be that snarky all the time. I mean, not necessarily either because I don't want people to think I'm totally rude. I like that people think I'm nice. But sometimes I just wish I had that kind of backbone to be able to kind of like stick up for myself. But that's an Iron Man thing. Uh, other than that, I feel like the more, like the, the extended Marvel Avengers, it would probably lean towards. Gosh, this is hard. Uh, as far as like the movies, movies go, I would probably say that one of the more underrated characters that I absolutely adore is Scarlet Witch. Just knowing that she is so overpowered, like they don't even they don't do it justice in the movies because if they did it justice there wouldn't there wouldn't be any kind of fun there wouldn't be any war like she would just be able to stop everything like her powers are insane so just for that she's one of my faves and then spider-man i am a tom holland stint wait did i say that right Yes, I think I did. <laughs> For whatever reason, I got Tobey Maguire confused in my head, and I, I respect the Tobey Tobey Maguire Spider Man era, but this new Spider Man era is where my heart is at. And the Andrew Garfield one, I mean, he was cute, but he was not Spider Man. Like this is our Spider Man. He's just such a pure beam. <sighs> Anyways, oh. Dana. So she said that I'm the reason that she got back into reading, which is really cool. I mean, I love seeing that whenever any of you guys comment, like, that I inspired you to read more or that I got you back into reading. Like, it's so cool just because, I mean, I love making these videos and I love reading, obviously. So it's just a good time. But to see that I have, like, any kind of impact is just insane to me. So, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, these are hard. Someone asked about Bucky Barnes. So he, again, still in the Avenger play area. Play area, what? No. So in the Avengers movies, I like Bucky. To be fair though, I don't know much about him outside of the movies, so I think that I have kind of like a skewed idea of what he's supposed to be like. And in the movies, he just hasn't really done anything, you know? I think he's like, he deserves better. <laughs> and I'm sure he's gonna get better because with everything that's gonna be coming out, I feel like he's gonna have a pretty nice role. But yeah, I don't, I feel kind of indifferent. I think that if I'd read the comics, I'd feel a little bit more stuff. Ooh, someone asked Akatar or Throne of Glass, and I'm gonna do you one better and say House of Earth and Blood, <laughs> because Crescent City is officially my favorite, but as far as, like, strictly between Throne of Glass and, and Akatar, the hard part is that I love Accord of Mist and Fury so much, but I love it probably a little bit, a little bit less than Air of Fire. It's just they have different things in my mind and they're all like on all time favorite lists. <sighs> to be fair though, I think I prefer how the Throne of Glass series built up and ended more than the Accord of Thorns and Roses series because it just felt kind of like a cop out. Um, I can easily admit that Accord of Wings and Ruin was not Sarah J. Mass's best work. But I love Resand and Feyre so much that it kind of skews things. And to be fair, I don't love how Kingdom of Ash ended. Like, it's not a five, five star ending in my head anymore. It's more of like a four star. So it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say. <laughs> so. No one's better than Thanos and Captain America. <laughs> Wait, okay, I'm posting this right here just because those are the two most opposite things. <laughs> Thanos, Captain America. <laughs> I love it though. I mean, I'd love that for you. And to be fair, Thanos, I get him sometimes. And Captain America, he's just, I think he's a little too pure for me. I tend to love morally gray characters because in general i guess like i feel more morally gray so when i see someone that's like super super good so my boyfriend he's a, one of those super super good people 
So he'd be like a Captain America kind of character, which I can respect. I just don't find very realistic most of the time, even though he exists. But because I'm more morally gray, I guess I like more morally gray characters. America's ass. <laughs> I just want to leave this up for the the rest of the live show. For that alone, I understand why you would love Captain America. I get it. <laughs> oh, someone asked if I would ever consider getting another kitten. And like, oh, I don't know why that went up. And like, I was trying to convince my boyfriend of it. But apparently, we're only allowed to have two cats in this house anyways. So I mean, I get it. It's OK. And to be totally fair, I'm a dog person, which is strange to say because I only have two cats. But I'm just like looking forward to the day where I feel like adult enough to have a dog again. So I probably shouldn't keep getting more cats. Oh, so someone asked the the big question. The the one the like OTP in Throne of Glass versus the OTP in A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I'm gonna tell you a Court of Thorns and Roses all the way. All the way. I mean, I love the other one in Throne of Glass, but it does not hit the same as A Court of Mist and Fury. So, oh, thank you, Desi. Is that how you say it, Desi, or is it oh, Desi? Thank you. So, someone was asking if I or said I should do a Throne of Glass inspired read along. Callie did, and I did one when Kingdom of Ash was coming back, coming out. So I probably wouldn't do another one soon. I mean, probably eventually. The thing is, is I do want to do a reread, but I almost want to do like a for me reread instead of a for the videos reread. So we'll see how I feel after I do that reread. <laughs> oh, that hour and a half long bookshelf tour. Thank you for sticking through for that. It was rough to edit. I just, I wish there had been more that I'd been able to cut out. I need to talk less. I'm very aware of this. I just talk way too much. Like even now, I don't know how long we've been going for. Oh, 37 minutes. That's not bad. That's not bad. But yeah, I just talk way too much. My next bookshelf tour, which a lot of you guys have been asking if I'm going to be doing a new one because I moved and I reorganized everything. I tend to do mine at the end of the years. And that's kind of what I wanted to stick to as far as like bookshelf tours. So I will probably not be doing another one until the end of the year, unless I want to rearrange my books because I like to have a snapshot of each time I rearrange it. So if I ever want to rearrange my books, just know a bookshelf tour is probably going to come right before that. <laughs> Recent is daddy, 100% agree. We love this, just we're going to stay right there. <laughs> Oh, so someone, wait, where is it? The Stacy Squad asked if I'm going to be doing any book hauls soon. Yes, when I have enough books, I haven't been buying any books, which is very surprising. I don't know what happened. I am normally a huge buyer of books, but I guess it slowed down and I didn't even realize it. And I've just been so distracted with the books that I have been reading that I haven't really bought any. But I do plan on doing one just once they build up. I think I only have maybe 10 books right now that I haven't hauled for you guys, which is probably a more manageable amount. I probably should be doing smaller book hauls. What do you guys think? Do you like smaller or bigger book hauls? Because I feel like there's no in-between for me. Either it's gonna be huge or it's gonna be like 10 books. Uh, Desi, your question about Crescent City, I hope to goodness that no, because I think I would cry. I just, I love Hunt so, so much in House of Birth and Blood. Like he's just, he's baby. And I just don't think, I don't think she would do it. I just don't see how she'd do it because with Tamlin, there were so many signs, like, especially if you like reread A Court of Thorns and Roses, you just see the signs. And so far, I haven't seen any of those kinds of weird signs with Hunt. So praying for now, but you never know what Sarah Jim asks. She loves to break our hearts. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so it looks like it's a unanimous huge for book hauls. So I'll wait until I have at least 30 for you guys, <laughs> which shouldn't be too much longer, you know? I mean, now that I've noticed I haven't bought any books. Ooh, I'm like blurring, that's weird. I'll probably buy some books. I have not done a video on books I don't like. And I think it's because I tend to not, not like as many books as other people do. I Maybe my standards are lower. Maybe I just am not as much of a critical reader as other people are. That's very possible. I know that when I'm reading, I'm reading solely for enjoyment. So I almost always end up having a good time. And I know my reading tastes very well. So I tend to know like the tropes I like, the kinds of things I like. People will say it again and again that Sarah J. Mass is not like the most quality writer. And whether that's true or not, it's not the writing that's like bringing me in. It's just like the scrumptious storytelling because she has all the tropes and all the things that I love so much. So because I know my reading taste so well, I feel like I don't tend to pick up books that I'm not going to like. So I haven't really done any videos on books I don't like because I haven't read that many books that I don't like. Like whenever I have to do my end of the year videos where I have to pick my worst books, it's difficult because I have to go and look for any book that I rated like under three stars, which is pretty rare. So I feel like this is a cool question. Um, just getting anxious about your TBR unread TBR. And I personally don't, not really. I have like a general goal to lower it just because I feel like where my anxiety, I feel like you can't see me as well because this window is open, so we close that up. But where my anxiety comes from with uh, having a huge TBR is the fact that I feel bad that I bought it and I didn't read it. And like it feels like a waste of money in my head. So I think that's where my anxiety kind of plays in. But as far as being nervous that I'm not reading enough, I think that there will be definitely days where I feel that way, where I'm like, wow, I need to get onto my reading game and do better. But listen, guys, this is what I mean. I have been preparing for this kind of quarantine lifestyle because there's so many unread books on my bookshelf. I don't even have to leave my house to go find new books. I'm probably good for a whole year with all the unread books on my shelf. <laughs> like probably between that and like the library and renting audiobooks through the app, I'll probably be good, you know? So I don't get very anxious about it as far as like coping with it. I just think that we need to be easier on ourselves. Like buying books is not a bad thing. Like it's a collection. It's not just about having read it or not. I mean, sometimes I'll feel guilty. Like if a friend comes in and they're like, oh my God, you've read all of these books, but I'll just give them that simple, like, no, <laughs> like no, <laughs> but you just have to be like more confident in yourself and just know that we all read at our own pace and having a large TBR doesn't mean that you're a bad reader. It just means that you're prepared. Okay. <laughs> Julie asked if I listen to K-pop and I kind of, I love Blackpink. I love Blackpink and I will basically listen to all of their songs, but I haven't been able to get into other K-pop. So that's been kind of like upsetting. There are definitely certain songs, like there's the BTS song with Halsey, Boy With Love. I love that one, but I have been wanting to get more into K-pop. So, I mean, leave your recommendations if you have any, but I, I definitely want to like BTS because I feel like that's just like a good one to like, but I haven't found something that I love yet. And I think it's just because I'm not looking to be totally fair, but still, yeah. I do not read the Shadowhunter show. Read the Shadowhunter show. I don't watch the Shadowhunter show. I saw someone ask that, but it just disappeared. Ooh, nice. These are some good recommendations, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's what it is, is that I like to have like more of the uh, like the baddie vibe, which is why I like Blackpink so much. And even Boy With Love, I feel like that song was maybe like even sassier than like the BTS songs that I've listened to. Whenever I listen to BTS, their music is like very wholesome and just sweet and puppy and fun, while I tend to like more of like the I don't know what that motion means, but that's that's the only way I know how to just explain it.
I feel like this is a great question. I 100% feel pressure to read because I have a YouTube channel. I, I like everyone, go through phases of wanting to read and not wanting to read. Just in my entire life, it's always been that way. As much as I am a reader, I go through phases where I just cannot want to pick up a book for months. And then I'll pick one up and then I can't stop reading. So it's kind of hard because you, I can't really allow myself to have those phases when I have a YouTube channel because I can't have months of no bookish content. That's, that's what this channel is about which is I think when I start to listen to more audiobooks, which I think is still fun because I still get the story aspect and I get to kind of like still be away from books for a certain amount of time. So yeah, I definitely feel pressured to read. I think that I don't feel pressure from you guys necessarily. It's just like content wise, I wouldn't know what to create without reading a lot, you know? So. I don't know how to, the comment disappeared and now I don't know how to pop it off the screen. So we're just gonna stay there until I find a new one. <laughs> oh, I like this question. Jen, Julian, Will, Jace, or Simon. So if you guys don't know, these are like the main boys basically in all of the uh, Shadowhunter books. And this one's really freaking easy for me. <laughs> and wait, 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 actually before I say it, I want you guys to try and guess, who do you think I'm gonna pick? Out of Jen, Julian, Will, Jace, or Simon, who do you think it is? Because this one is so easy for me. It's crazy. Actually, no, no, no. There's two. There's a top two. <laughs> mm, well, no. Actually, there's a clear one, but, like, we'll see. All right. I'm seeing a ton of Wills, and you guys are correct. Will Herondale is my baby. First of all, black hair and blue eyes, whenever I've read that in books, ever since I was 10 years old i was like wow black hair blue eyes that's gonna be it i love that i love that combo so that already had me sold and then he's just like this little playboy kind of character which i love i don't know what it is i know it's not great but i love seeing like those kinds of characters in books just the kind of can have whoever they want and they do have whoever they want and then they meet the girl and the girl's so sweet and she's so different you know not like other girls and they fall in love with her but also he was just like a sweetie pie at heart and he just loved 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 Jem so much and he was a reader and just we, we stan but then the other one was jace if you guys were wondering just like i said i like the playboy kind of character i don't know why but it's it's my thing Jem is a close third, to be totally fair, just because Jem is a sweetie pie. He's just like not my kind of like book style boyfriend, I guess, because my bookish boyfriends, I like to be kind of like a player, while my my real boyfriend, I obviously, I would relate him way more to Jem than any of the other characters. <laughs> Maybe like Simon, I guess. <laughs> but Simon's probably my, no, no, Julian's probably my least favorite, but only because I didn't like Dark Artifices. And I didn't like that relationship, so. Yikes. <laughs> I've seen this a couple of times. If I liked DC too, I, yeah, I mean, I kind of feel meh about it. I like the movies, I'll watch the movies. But at the end of the day, I'm still like a hardcore Marvel fan. And it's kind of always been that way. My boyfriend's the DC Comics lover, so. This is a great question. I don't know. I have, okay, the problem is, is that I'm really excited to start the channel, but I've always had issues with starting things because I want it to be perfect for whatever reason, when nothing can be, but I just haven't, Got, like sold myself on a good video idea yet for my second channel because it kind of has to be like an introduction it kind of has to be more of the vibe of what that channel is going to be i want it to be more like lifestyle centered i guess just because I, it's going to be a catch-all i'm going to be able to do basically everything on it if i have a clothing haul i can post it there if i have a stationary haul i can post it there if i have a vlog that i don't read in, i can post it there so it's it's definitely a catch-all and it's making it harder for me to settle on a first video idea so Hopefully soon, I just need to settle. I kind of want to do a mukbang, but I don't know what to talk about yet. So what's the point of making a mukbang if I don't have any questions to answer, you know? Mm. 
Ooh, I feel like this is a fun question. So as far as like career, I guess, options, I do maybe eventually want to try my hand at writing a book, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'll ever think that it'll get published. I think someone just walked by. But I want to just write a book. I know I've always wanted to write a book and I keep letting life get in the way. So I haven't even tried yet, but that's the first step is like sitting down and seeing if you have any ideas, you know? Um, after that, I don't know if I'd ever go into like editing or anything like that for publishing. I am kind of drawing a blank in general on what I want to do when I grow up, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm figuring it out one day at a time. <laughs> Shane, I'm so sorry, but your girlfriend has good taste and thank you for buying her hardcover copies of it. That's very sweet. <laughs> there's definitely people, oh, it's just my roommate. He lives in, so I'm like in an enclosed part of the house, which is why there's no lighting in here. I have the ring light on, but there's like a little casita that, the youngest brother lives in and he's right over there. So whenever he walks through to like go through the front door, I see him and it wigs me out, you know? <laughs> Books and brains, thank you for staying with me even though it's 1 a.m. in the UK. Like that's, I mean, personally I stay awake until like 3 a.m. every night, it's, it's a problem, but I know that a lot of people are not like that. So thank you. Oh, this is a great question. <laughs> My favorite edition of a book that I have. This is hard because actually there's a lot of really pretty books that I have. Like there's there's all the UK versions in hardcover of the Never Night trilogy, which I adore. And I have a few of like the Dark Dawn, which I love. But my all-time favorite is actually one that I still have packed away because I just don't even know if I want to put it on my shelf. Like I want to keep it as a memento for forever. But when the pre-order for House of Birth and Blood started, or not when it started, but when it was about to be released, Sarah J. Mass had posted that she's doing like personalized copies. And if you were in time and clicked on the link in her Instagram, then you were able to get one and I did. So that's probably my most prized possession because I mean, Sarah J. Mass is my all time favorite author and I absolutely adore her books. I love Crescent City. I keep calling it Crescent City, but it's House of Birth and Blood, which gets kind of confusing, but I loved House of Birth and Blood and it's, my new favorite book which is crazy so having like a signed edition that says my name on it from sarah j mass it's my favorite it just has to be <laughs> i'm always gonna like reese better it's just it's just he's just baby like i adore him he is such a well to be fair We'll see what happens in the second book of Crescent City, because then if Hunt like steps up, not steps up, that's the wrong word, because he does a really good job as far as stepping up, and he's just so sweet, and he cares a lot, but I just need, I just need like, I need to see his, uh, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I'm like getting embarrassed because like the thing is like Reese is just like very sexy. Like I think anyone can agree to that if you read A Court of a Stone Fury. Reese is sexy, and I just want to see that in Hunt, so we'll see. <laughs> this is actually perfect. So Isabel said, let's read, and I agree, because first of all, my voice is tired, and we're almost at an hour. So I think that we should take a 15-minute break. If you guys have your book, get it out. If you don't want to, that's totally cool. If you want to keep like leaving questions, I'll try and scroll through it again after the 15 minutes are done. But let's, let's kind of, let's set a timer. I'm going to pick up Aquacorn Cove because again, I really want to finish this like in the live stream with you guys. I don't know if I'll finish it in the 15 minutes. Maybe it's, it's short, you know, it's a graphic novel, but we'll see. So let me just pull up my timer and all right, 15 minutes on the clock, guys. Are you ready?
and start. So I'll see you guys at 510. Love these end papers. <laughs> Guys, that's like the first little paper. It's just like a seahorse and a Nemo. Clownfish, I know. I'm so cute. Okay. <laughs> My hydro flask, sorry to interrupt, but my hydro flask, for whatever reason, whenever I don't drink from it for too long, it fills up the little hole where like the straw is at. It just dripped everywhere. It's fine.
God. Scared the heck out of me. That was that so loud. <sighs> okay, how much did you guys get done? I actually, I got a good chunk, but to be fair, it's just, it's a graphic novel. So a few more pages and I would have been at the end. We'll probably do another reading sprint just in a little bit because I want to be able to finish this book with you guys. And, you know, that's what this was supposed to be, you know. <laughs> so let's see what you guys said while I was gone. Oh my gosh, so many good messages. Sorry, I'm like reading through them all. <laughs> but it's, it's so fun. You guys are all talking to each other. I love it. I feel like I'm getting, you know what? I'm gonna, I wanna switch over to a different area of my room because I'm kind of tired of that spot. Twist in the ring light, sorry to blind you. We're just gonna sit here. Mm. I feel like the lighting isn't as good, but that's fine because I'm comfortable. So. Perfect. Oh yeah, it looks like you guys read a lot. Nice. Love of all, like, I love all the people that were reading Crescent City during that. That just makes me feel good. Perfect. Cruel Prince. Nice. Oh, okay. So let's, let's kind of answer a couple questions again. So this one, which is pretty, it's hard to say. So they asked if I like Sorcery of Thro Thrones. That sounds like a really cool title though, right? Sorcery of Thrones. Anyways, but Sorcery of Thorns. And if I would ever participate in a readathon of Sorcery of Thorns. And I liked Sorcery of Thorns. I think it was really good in general. I think Margaret Rogerson has like some good writing. I enjoyed in Enchantment of Ravens, probably equally to Sorcery of Thorns. Uh, I like that she has written only standalone so far. I think that's a really fun thing to do with the fantasy genre because you just don't normally see standalone fantasies. But it didn't leave like a lasting impression on me, unfortunately. So it's not something that I consistently think about or obsess over or anything like that. It just is a good book. And I want to say that it's partially because I listened to it on audio. And if I'd listened or read it physically, maybe I would have had a different reaction. It's not like your cat. They deserve it. <laughs> but... Tori, you asked about the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, and I actually haven't read it yet, so we're in the same boat. I, I don't think you'll regret it, though. I've seen a lot of really good reviews over it. I want to read it this year, too. Simply Marie, I am 100% going to be participating in the Asian Readathon for that Read with Cindy is hosting again this year. I loved it loved participating last year it was actually the first month that i had a bullet journal so it's kind of we're finally at a year of me having had a reading journal which is really cool but i still need to plan out my tbr video and get it posted yikes i probably should do that by tomorrow but i am really excited about it i loved it last year i think it's just such a great celebration of just asian culture and reading different stories from either like asian authors or based it's really really amazing and i can't wait to see what i read because i've already been planning out my tbr and it's just getting more and more exciting so definitely gonna be participating i think i've seen someone comment if i would do an akatar read along a couple of times now and i would definitely uh consider doing an akatar read along because i haven't done that yet so it would be kind of fun maybe not soon just because i'm currently in a reread of akatar 
So I'm already a little too late to start the read along and I don't want to pause at this exact moment. And I really want to jump into A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is weird because the last time that I read the first two books, I just ignored the third book and didn't read it. But now I'm in the mood to read it, which is strange. And Julietta, of course I can notice your message. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for joining me. Oh, I know, my old blog makes me crave boba as well. So we're in the same boat as far as that goes. <sighs> Bookshelf tour, I've already actually talked about that um, in earlier in this vlog, but just, I, I always do bookshelf tours at the end of the year, not in the beginning. Uh, I honestly, <laughs> so Isabel, I don't really know what kind of pulled the trigger for me finally starting a bullet journal. I had wanted to do it for quite a while. I bought actually that journal in 2018 and I just never got to using it until last year. And I have always kind of just dabbled in it just because I liked the idea of being able to like creatively express myself. I used to draw all the time and I actually at my heart, sorry, I'm tripping up, but at my high school, I, you had to apply to get into the high school and audition for it. And you had to have a major in my first two years I had majored as art. So it's always been something that I held really close to my heart. And I thought that getting into bullet journaling might help me kind of explore that creativity again that I definitely had lost ever since I didn't do that anymore. And then Isabella, I did annotate Crescent City. She is, let me grab it. I also kind of moved around the ring light so it looked a little bit better, but she is tabbed. This is probably one of my heaviest annotations since Crescent City, but it's funny because the last like, the last chunk of the book, I barely annotated. I was so into it, I could not stop. Uh... What's the book next to all the stars and teeth? Is it this one? Because this is Merciful Crow, if that's what you're asking. But then this one right here is Crescent City. It's the tour edition, so. If, if I was in Avatar The Last Airbender, what would my element be? This is kind of a tricky one for me because I always thought I would be fire. Uh, but whenever I ask other people, they think I'd be air. Which I get, you know, I, I understand. That's how my personality comes off to people. It's like how people definitely don't see that I'm a Slytherin right away, or sometimes at all. But it's just, it's like, I'm a little too bubbly for people to see under the skin, I guess. But I always thought it would be fire. I still kind of stand by fire. Potentially, if it wasn't fire, I guess air would be fine. I just don't feel like it would be air. Favorite Sarah J. Mass quote. I feel like I need to stop answering Sarah J. Mass questions because if anyone's not a Sarah J. Mass fan, they would be annoyed. But it's it's actually one that I've been planning on getting tattooed for years now. And once this actually, someone earlier asked, what's the first thing I would do when I get out of quarantine? And I'm getting that tattooed the moment I'm out of quarantine. I hope to film it or like something along those lines. I just am finally like dead set on getting it. And I originally had been kind of holding back because it's an arm tattoo. And as I have other tattoos, but they're not like as visible and arm tattoos are still frowned upon in our society. But at this point, I think I'm just gonna bite the bullet. And I'm not getting the whole quote, but my favorite quote from Sarah J. Mass's books is you could rattle the stars, you could do anything if only you dared. And that's what scares you the most. It's just, it's in the first book, it's in Throne of Glass. It obviously appears throughout the series just because Rattle the Stars is such a big quote throughout the series, but that specific one is in the first book and it's just always held such a, such a high place in my heart.
Uh, for my tab colors, they're still mostly the same as my annotation video. So if you ever want to check that out, it's it was made, uh, I think, about a year ago now. I do want to do an updated annotation video just because I kind of switched up my colors, but I don't know. I feel like just switching up the colors doesn't mean I should change my annotation videos. So we'll see what I end up doing. Miriam, happy early birthday. Everyone wish her happy early birthday. How I, I hope that you're going to have a great one, even though it's in these circumstances, but have a good time. Favorite quote from Harry Potter. Hi, Orne. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Some some names still kind of trip me up just because, you know, I wasn't, I was raised here, not in Argentina, but my favorite Harry Potter quotes. Gosh, I honestly want to say it's I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. Like that is just so good. I mean, there's so many good quotes in Harry Potter, like so many that like mean a lot, but I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good is probably just my favorite. It's just such a good time. Ooh, I definitely want to answer this because I get tons of questions asking where I listen to audiobooks. And I talk about it a few times. I think that I need to make like a dedicated audiobook video. I do want to make a dedicated audiobook recommendations video. And there I'll talk about this again, just in case for anyone that's not watching right now, obviously. But I actually use three different apps to listen to audiobooks. I listen or I use Audible, which I just have a subscription to and I get one credit every month. That's kind of like my last ditch effort. Like if I can't find the audiobook I want on any of the other services, then I'll finally like spend the credit <laughs> on Audible. So that's my last ditch effort. But then I like to use Scribd and Libby. Scribd can be a little touchy just because if you listen to like two popular books, in a week, like that's all the credits that you're gonna have, or like you won't be able to really listen to any other books during the month. But last month, I actually listened to the entire Mortal Instrument series on Scribd, and I never got halted, so that was pretty cool. It just depends. Um, and then Libby is the one that goes through your library. My library, luckily, actually has a pretty good selection. They tend to have a ton of books, so I normally check Libby first, and if I can't get it from there, then Scribd, and then if I can't get it from there, then Libby. <laughs> or then Audible, I said Libby. Oh, I, ooh, sorry. Someone said that they were stuck between getting a Sarah J Maas quote and a Nevernight quote, and I feel you on that because I have, I'm still tempted to get never flinch, never fear, and never forget, or never ever forget. There's just a lot of really good quotes from Nevernight. I mean, the one that's like too, many books too few years there's just there's a lot of good reader quotes in never night which i really appreciate casey if i could have one bookish boyfriend from any story from any story oh i don't know if i just want hunt right now because he's so fresh in my mind and he's like a new shiny thing but right now I want Hunt. Normally it's Reese though, Reese Ann's. Like he is baby. He's my baby. I don't know who else. Well, I mean, I do like like definitely some of the Shadowhunter boys, but like, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard because I, I like who they're with. I like, <laughs> it's hard for me to want like a bookish boyfriend because then I'm like, oh, I'm stealing them away from their perfect pairing though. So like, why would I do that? You know, I don't know. Alexis asking about the Harry Potter series and if any of them go slow. For me, I've only read them once again. I started a reread and I've just been trudging my way through it. But for me, Order of the Phoenix went really slow. But so did Goblet of Fire, which was strange. I Because I know that's a lot of people's favorite book. I think it's just the environment I read it in. I had been on my way to like a figure skating competition. I was maybe 12 or 13, probably less actually. And I was reading in the car and reading in the car is not a good time for me. So I think that's why it went slower for me, but definitely Word of the Phoenix. But that's hard to say, because I know a lot of people, that's their favorite book. So it just depends like the mindset that you go into it with. I was also pretty young when I was reading these, so. I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'm sorry if I butcher it, but hello, Alberto from Denmark. Albert, Albert, Alberte. I don't know. I'm saying it weird now, but <laughs> hello. And thank you for watching. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want to do this one, the Kiss, Mary Kill. I think this will, this will be fun. Hunt, wow, I didn't actually read who it was in the options. This is going to be fun. But Hunt from House of Earth and Blood, Reese or Luna Lovegood? <laughs> you guys are going to cancel me. And the funny thing is, is Luna Lovegood is literally what I named my cat after. Like Luna, she's named after Luna Lovegood. So, but I'm sorry to say that she's going to have to die. I love Luna. Such a sweetheart. Love that for her. But Hunt and Reese, I could never. Like, I think I would probably end up marrying Reese. Because he's just, you know, he's just husband material. And then I would definitely kiss Hunt. Because he's just, he's hot. And then, I'm sorry, Luna. I'm not going to kiss you or marry you. So you're just going to have to die. <laughs> Shane, I tend to not read as many paperbacks, so this isn't as much of an issue in hardcovers because, I mean, like, you hear that first, like, crick, but it doesn't really crack or anything like that, but I'm the kind of person that if I am reading a paperback, like what I did with the Mistborn series, I do everything to avoid bending the spine, so I'll, I'll open it, like, pretty fully, but I don't, I don't crease the spine, or I try not to. As far as the Shatter Me, I think you've asked this before. Um, I loved the first part of the trilogy in Shatter Me. I have not liked the last three books. I haven't bought the last book. I actually forgot that it had come out. I have no interest in reading it currently. I mean, I'm going to do it just because I've gotten this far. But yeah, I don't necessarily recommend the last three. But we'll see how I feel after the finale. Oh, this will be more fun. Kiss, Mary, Kill, <laughs> Harry Potter, Hermione, and Ron. We're talking about the book versions, right? <sighs> or the movie. We're going to go with the movie versions because I feel like I know them best because when I read the books, it was so long ago. So I'm going to marry Hermione because she's goals. I would love to be with her. She would just keep my life so organized and we would have such a good time and we could just read together and go to the library and we could just like sneer at boys, you know? And I would probably kiss Harry because pff, he's the chosen one. <laughs> no, that's not why, but I mean, I just think it'd be funny. And then, God, I'm sorry, Ron. I feel bad doing this to you, but this is, this is movie Ron in my head. Don't think book Ron because book Ron is way different than movie Ron. So sorry, movie Ron. The first book series I ever read, Rebecca, was, I believe, the series of Unfortunate Events. I think that that was the first, well, I mean, the first real series, because I was definitely reading, like, the Magic Treehouse books. Does anyone remember those? Those were my jam. Hi, Adela from Czech Republic. Oh, my gosh, I'm getting so many international people. Hello. Not to say I don't like all my United States people, because I'm here, too. But it's really cool to see from other countries. It's fun. Jessica, no. It's actually really, really hard to get me to cry in general, but also in books. I, as much as I adored Crescent City and there were some heart-wrenching parts, I didn't cry. And I tend to not cry in books. I think I've only cried like one or two times total. It's not, it's just, I don't cry. I don't normally cry in movies either. Or in life, to be quite fair. <laughs> Um, I haven't read Red Queen, Judith, so I have no thoughts on it. I want to read it. Mika, my friend here on BookTube, she adores the series, so I think I would give it a try and just to like have a good time with her and chit chat about it. Oh, a lot of things just loaded at the same time. Hi, Shayla from Canada. See, I love this. This is so cool. We're all in different parts of the world and we're talking. Oh, I love this question. I know I said I'd stop talking about Sarah J. Mass. I know, I know, I know. This must be annoying. So, Evelyn asked if Reese and Hunt had a guy tonight. What do you think they'd do? And honestly, I think that Hunt would just want to watch some Sunball. 
he would have like his hat on backwards and Reese would just kind of be sitting there very confused about the rules of the game, but also pretending like he knew what was going on because that's very Reese, you know, but he'd be genuine about it. And he would just kind of probably keep like zapping up like alcohol and food because he's just trying to have a good time. I'd like to think that he would also invite Cassian and Asriel and that they would have like the best bro time because they're all just like bros. Well, I mean, I think Cassian and Hunt would probably get along the best and Reese and Asriel would be a little bit more quiet and just kind of like sidelines, you know? <laughs> That's that's how I think that would go. <laughs> the person that says they cry every time they go to therapy. I go to therapy. I still don't cry. I don't know, guys. There's just not a many. I just, I just, I'm not a crier. Like, that's not to say I don't, like, feel sad. I just, like, I don't cry. I don't like crying. I don't like people seeing me cry. It's not a thing for me. <laughs> Ryan, I have always loved being an only child. I think this also, like, plays into my whole loving quarantine. Like, I'm just so good alone. <laughs> So, I mean, I've never had an issue with it. I think I would have thrown a huge tantrum if my mom had ever told me that I was getting like a little brother or sister. I don't think I would have liked it one bit, but I probably would have gotten used to it eventually. One could hope, but we'll see. I don't know. And sorry, I just realized that you had a secondary part to your question um, on any advice. I would say like your friends, like your friends are going to be your family. That's probably the biggest thing for being an only child. Like your friends really are your family because like you don't have any siblings. And so making like that best friend that you can feel really connected to, that's going to be like your sister. You know, I've had tons of friends that just like, they feel like family to me instead. And I think like as an only child, it's just more accentuated. I know that everyone feels that way about like their friends occasionally, but I think that we need something to attach to, you know? So I would say your friends, just get some good friends and love them and hope that they love you as much. <laughs> oh, a lot of things are moving, but I keep seeing someone ask, yes, Morgan, who my favorite Red Rising character is, and it's probably Mustang. She's just, such a badass. I stand Mustang. I love Mustang. Like, I can just, like, I, I just love her. Like, I love her. I can just feel her in my mind, and she's just such a good presence. <laughs> so, it took me a moment to realize what you were talking about, but Idas is in Crescent City. I love him. I think that he's actually going to be a pretty cool character. I don't think it's going to be romance, though. I, don't, I think he's going to be more of, like, the fatherly kind of figure, even though she already has, like, a fatherly figure. Maybe, like, a big brother kind of situation. But the cat licking line, I thought that was hilarious. I loved it. That seems like a very race thing of him to have said. All right, now I officially am going to stop talking about Sarah J. Mask, guys. I cannot. I'm sorry if you aren't asking anything, but I just, I don't want to, I don't want to answer anymore about Sarah J. Mask. I'm not much of a classics reader, Chloe, but hello, all the way from Scotland. That's really cool. Uh, I would have to say that my favorite classic, and I feel like there's been a lot of hate towards it recently that I've been seeing, which I understand, but I think I liked it for different reasons, but I love Catcher in the Rye, so that's probably going to be my favorite classic, and other than that, looking at my classic shelf right now. Uh, yeah, it would probably be. Because I still haven't read Alice in Wonderland, I know, crazy. But yeah, it's probably Catcher in the Rye for now. Oh. oh my gosh, Gwendolyn, tell your cat I say hello because I love it when animals say hi to me. Momo, yeah, we should read soon, you're correct. Um, at 5.40, we'll set the clock for another 15 minutes, and then we'll probably end it soon after that way, like, it's just a two-hour long live show.
I still haven't read Queen of Nothing. That's going to happen tomorrow, actually. That's my plan for tomorrow. So, yeah. Oh, everything loaded again. Yeah, I know. I know. People really hated Catcher in the Rye. I think that for me, it's just like, it's so fascinating from a psychological standpoint. That's really it. That's the only reason I loved it. Uh, I read it right before I was graduating from, well, no, not right before. I read it like junior year of high school. And it's what like set me on my path towards like psychology in general and why I majored in psychology. And even to this day, like I just respect it for that. Just like, like from a psychological standpoint, it's fascinating. But I mean, like as a person, like the main character, yeah, he sucks. <laughs> I see a lot of people asking whether I prefer fairy loot or owl crate. And that's a hard one just because I feel like they, they both have like certain things going for them. I think that like the months that fairy loot maybe isn't as impressive are the months that owl crate is really impressive. So it's like, it's really funny. They kind of switch around in that aspect, but they're both really high quality. Uh, I would have to say, like, if today I had to drop every, like, book subscription I would ever get and stick with only one, it would, it would, it's really hard to say. I don't know. I really love fairy loot, though. I love working with them in general. I think that, like, I, I feel very connected to the team over at fairy loot. So I feel like, I don't know, like, because they're, they're even as boxes go. In my mind, they're even. Like, they, they tend to have similar quality all the way around. But, yeah, I don't know. That's hard. It's really up to you. Like, just make that decision for yourself because I really can't decide. I can't make a decision to save my life, to be honest. Ooh. This is cool because I originally never thought of making a Patreon just because I never knew what I would do with it. I just didn't think it translated to like bookish community, which is dumb because there's so many booktubers that have Patreons and I just never thought about it. But I would consider it if I ever wanted to do YouTube like more full time, I would probably have to start a Patreon just to like be a little bit more secure as far as like income goes. But for now, um, not until I have a good idea for it. I don't want to just make a Patreon just to make a Patreon and try and make money. That's not what I would want for it. I would want to like be making like some really cool stuff for you guys. Like I really love how Books of Chloe does her Patreon. I am subscribed to hers. Uh, I just think that like hers is very like well put together. So I would want to like make something that I felt was quality as well. So yeah, but right now probably not. But like again, if I were to ever want to do YouTube full time, it would probably have to be a thing that I did. Uh, so Katie, about Book of the Month. Yeah, I actually was an affiliate for the YA Book of the Month, but then that, I'm still like kind of unclear on what exactly happened, but they kind of merged it into their regular Book of the Month subscription. And since then, I haven't uh, checked out the website. I don't even, I'm not even sure if I'm still an affiliate or not. Like, to be quite honest, I really need to look into that. I think that it's a really cool brand. I just don't think it's worth it for me because of the book subscription boxes that I have. I kept, when I was subscribed to it, I kept accidentally getting the book that I would either get in my Fairy Loot box or my Owl Cray box. So it's just kind of like creating doubles in my library for no good reason. So for me, it wasn't worth it in that aspect. But I think that it's really great as far as like just finding a new book to read every single month and having like options. So Priscilla, hello, Costa Rica, that's fun. And I would probably say A Darker Shade of Magic before Scythe. I like Scythe, but I think Darker Shade of Magic is better. But you're also asking like a fantasy lover. Like I love fantasy more than probably any other genre. So that's hard. Oh gosh, sorry, my nose is itchy, guys. <laughs> Whenever I talk too loud, I don't know, this has happened to anyone else. I think it's because I talk so loud, but it like vibrates my nose <laughs> and then it itches. And I like swear every single video I'm like rubbing my nose, but I cut it all out. So it doesn't look like I'm just like, you know. 
I'm Gwendolyn. Yeah, I'm kind of having a fun time doing this kind of live show, live stream. So maybe like we'll I'll do a more in depth like reading one. This one it was more of like a 50k Q and A situation, so that's why there hasn't been as much reading. But I do want to do maybe another one and just like actually read with you guys and sit down and chill. I want to try and bring Nika into one of these. I wanted her to come today, but like she was busy. <laughs> to be fair, I asked way last minute, which is definitely my character. So I want to like, I don't know. I think that this would be fun. It's a good time and I feel like more connected to you guys. And then Kayla, I do speak Spanish. So my mom's Argentinian, so I, I speak that. <laughs> game express i don't know if i'm going to do a book shopping spree after quarantine i've kind of been looking on book outlet so there's the potential of it happening right now i'm trying to stay off of amazon just because i guess it's like i recently found out that like they're kind of going into like overdrive as far as like work goes and like their workers are kind of having a hard time so i'm trying to stay off amazon prime and a lot of books that i wanted were on amazon prime so Oh, wait, guys, I said at 540 we would read, and it's 541. <laughs> well, I'm on my phone. <gasps> so grab your books, <laughs> and um, let's, let's set another 15 minutes on the clock. And, like, let's not make it as loud well this time. I don't want it to be those chimes again. Oh, that's awful. I don't like that either. Let's do, let's do this. Oh, no, I hate that noise. It's a night owl, and I thought it'd be like a fun little hoot. Okay, we'll have it that be that, and I'm just going to turn it way down. No, 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 no. Okay, let's start it. All right, so 15 minutes on the clock. Let's get to reading, guys.
That was good timing. Okay. All right. So I honestly didn't look where I was in Accordance and Fury when I started, but I read some more of that and I finished Aquacorn Cove. So I did what I set out to do in this live show and it was lovely. If you guys haven't picked up any of Katie O'Neill's works before this, I actually think that Aquacorn Cove might be my new favorite. I mean, I love Tea Dragon Society and I love like the respect and everything in it, but I just feel like Aquacorn Cove's message with like the coral reefs and just loving your world was just it resonated with me so let's see i do kind of want to start wrapping this live show up because it's nearing on two hours and i feel like that would be a good place to leave off so uh, if you have any like last last questions that you want to ask we're just gonna kind of be finishing this on up and i can take this airpod out of my ear because whenever i have headphones in for too long my ears start to ache so yeah <laughs> Here, let me see. This is kind of an interesting question. So a reading warrior asked, what was it like when I started on booktube? And this one, I mean, it's strange because I started, oh my gosh, wait, I think my two years either is about to happen or it already happened. I can't remember exactly, but that's crazy. So two years and it was, it was different. I mean, I feel like maybe it could have just felt different because I wasn't as involved in like the social media aspect. I've always had a little bit of trouble with the social media aspect. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm bad at Twitter and I'm bad at Instagram, but also go follow me on because <laughs> I'm trying to get better. <laughs> but it was just, I think, a lot less dramatic. Um, it's hard because I think that everyone's like opinions have merit, obviously, and there's probably a reason that things get so dramatic, but it's just not something that I care for. I mean, I'm here to read. I'm really not here to do anything else. And I understand there's like a lot of really good arguments to be made on certain books and cancel culture is alive and well in the book community. It's just not something that I personally like or really get involved in. I just don't find the need to. I'm here to read, you know? And I feel like when I first started, it felt a lot more like that. Like it felt a lot more uh, maybe accepting, I guess. And even now it's not, I'm not necessarily saying BookTube isn't accepting because I think out of any community in YouTube, it is the most accepting. But like it has its drama, like any other area. At least our drama is way more chill. <laughs> I mean, actually it can get pretty, pretty shaky up there, but I stay out of it for the most part. I just don't like getting involved. I'm not a big conflict person. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, my leggings, um, if you're talking about either the burgundy ones or the light blue ones, I got them from Lululemon. They're really freaking comfortable. So, I mean, Lululemon leggings are expensive, but like, wow, they're just so soft, very comfy. Love them. Uh, any of my other ones, they're kind of from a, a sprinkling of brands. I know one of them is from like Old Navy. Another one I got at Marshalls. It just depends. But I just look for like high waisted normally. That's like my thing. Never Night or Red Rising? Oof. I feel like I shouldn't answer that question until I finish God's Grave. Or not God's Grave. Dark Tone. <laughs> because I've finished the whole Red Rising trilogy. So I feel like I need to finish the Never Night trilogy before I give you a final answer on that. I just really like Red Rising's like political mind aspect of it i just think it's like it makes me feel smarter as i read it which is weird because it's not necessarily teaching me anything it's just like darrow's mind is so fascinating to me so that has like a certain sway but also nevernight has a lot of the things that i love like assassins and a sassy female and the shadow cat like how could i say no oh i think this would be fun actually let me oh my gosh also i love your profile lisa is my favorite black person <laughs> but i think it would be kind of fun in my next live stream to kind of be journaling with you guys but 
Oh, we'll see, because that would actually have to be soon, pretty soon, because obviously the new month is starting, so I need both my bullet journal and my reading journal to be done by the start of the month. But I would really like to do this. I think it would be kind of fun to do. So we'll see how I end up fitting that in, but maybe it'll just kind of even be like a casual journaling session, like where I do a weekly spread or something next week. Uh, tips for bullet journaling. This one, I mean, I'm still pretty new at it too, guys. I feel really new at it anyways, but it's kind of just trial and error is what I've come to realize. Like if you mess up, if you realize that there's a spread that you just didn't use, like that's okay. You don't have to use every spread that you use. You don't have to journal every single day, anything like that. It's just about getting started and finding what works for you. For me, bullet journaling was about getting my life organized, obviously, but it's also just about like being creative and having a creative outlet. And that's sort of what I skewed my needs for it. But I guess my best tip is just to like Google or not Google to search in YouTube, like bullet journaling videos and see which ones like styles really stick out to you. I mean, I feel like everyone knows about Amanda Rachley at this point because she's like the bullet journaling queen, but she's amazing she's definitely one of my like top inspirations whenever i do any kind of journaling so just find your like journaling inspiration that's like my best tip for it because after that everything kind of comes easy you don't even need the materials for it you just can use whatever's on hand <laughs> oh this is a cute one to probably end it with Wait, well is this the one that i want to well, we'll see we'll, we'll see but I guess, oh gosh, I'm getting all sappy, but I think my favorite part is how kind he is. Like, it's strange. I feel like whenever I'm telling other people about him, like, it sounds like I'm really, like, blowing him up to be this, like, incredibly amazing person, like a Captain America type figure. Like, he really is that kind and, like, that nice. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think the world's kind of messed up there because no one's allowed to be that nice. But that's probably my favorite part about him. Like, it's just how... Uh, honestly good he is it really evens out my like chaotic neutral personality <laughs> do i ever think i would create my own readathon i feel like i'm not organized to create my own readathon so if i ever did it would probably have to be with friends and i don't know what it would even be. So the answer is probably not because I don't really want to make like a throne of glass readathon. And I feel like that's the only thing I'm passionate enough about to create a readathon on. So probably not, but I like participating in everyone else's. All right, I'm gonna answer two more questions and then we're done. So I'm sorry guys. Um, let's, okay. So my favorite Blackpink song is, it depends on the day, honestly, but I've been really into, I don't know if I'm blanking, I keep thinking doo 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 and like that was definitely my favorite song in the beginning, but not anymore. Oh, it's, it's Whistle. Right now it's Whistle, which is strange because I feel like I just never used to listen to Whistle. And then one day I, I heard it again and I'm like, wait, why don't I really listen to that song? So currently it's Whistle. And then one last question. Oh, that would be cool. A Throne of Glass tag. I could potentially work with that. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. And then, all right, let's just end it on this. Do I want any more pets? Of course I do, guys. I am an animal enthusiast. I love animals. I love, I grew up with dogs. That is like, I love big dogs. Big dogs are my bread and butter. So yeah, one day I want to get another German Shepherd. You guys know that I had a German Shepherd and he passed away last year. And one day... I want another one probably because he was just the goodest boy or maybe another I had a golden retriever too that he was also probably the, the second goodest boy <laughs> but yeah one day I definitely need definitely need a big old dog because my cats are great but they don't let me just like smother them with love whenever I need it. <laughs>
<laughs> so that's it. Thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me for two freaking hours. I can't believe that we've been here for two hours and that we are still talking. It feels like I've just been hanging out with friends. I'm definitely going to have to do this again. I might try and make it like a weekly thing as far as um, as long as quarantine is still happening just to kind of like feel a little bit more connected because obviously I'm just isolated in my house. But yeah, but thank you so, so much for hanging out. I know we didn't get a lot of reading done. The next one I swear is gonna be a lot more reading heavy, but for now we did a good job. We did a good job. I don't know how much you read, but I feel pretty accomplished. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you all so, so much. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for 50k and for being quite literally the best best people and for hanging out with me so yeah i will see you all in my next one i forgot how to do my outro just now this happens a lot during videos too but you never see it <laughs> but well, it goes okay thank you so so much i love you so so much and i will see you in my next one goodbye <laughs> now i have to end it <laughs>